Hi, my name is Mitko and this is Forever 1.10. In this video we will be going over the new features and changes in our Endless Runner plugin. We released Forever about a year and a half ago and since then we have been using it to develop our own title, LifeSlide. We haven't released any updates for the past one year, but behind the curtains we have been working hard to make this plugin better and better. So without further ado, let's dive in. The first key change in Forever 1.10 is how levels are defined. Forever 1.10 uses scriptable objects to define levels. So if I go over to the level generator, I now have this arrangeable list in which I can add more elements. In the previous versions levels were created right inside the level generator. But now to create a new level we need to go to the create asset menu, hit forever and then level. This will create a new level object which I will rename. And now we see a familiar interface. Now nothing much has changed here, we still have the same sequences and we add level segments to them by clicking and dragging. And now that we have the level set up, we can select it from here or of course we can just drag it inside the list. Now of course our level generator complains that it doesn't have a path generator which we can take care of by going into the assets folder and assigning a path generator to it. And usually this is everything you need to do to get this going, but if I press play, I'm gonna be left out with an empty scene. And if I go to the path generator, I'm gonna see a little error here, which brings me to the second topic. In Forever 1.10, we introduced randomizers. These are objects which define how random numbers within the plugin are generated. They are very useful if you want to customize how your randomization works. By default, Forever comes with a default randomizer object, which works basically the same as the randomization we had up until now. So if you assign this and press play, you will get your level generated just as before. Now here's the power of randomizers. If I keep pressing play, I will keep getting different results. Because currently we're using the default randomizer, which is using Unity's random class. However, if I wanted to use a seed so that I can synchronize it between players across a network, or just generally want to ensure that I can generate the same level with a given seed, I can use a .NET randomizer. Let's create one right away. Create. Then we're gonna go forever, randomizers, and then .NET randomizer. Now the .NET randomizer allows me to specify a seed. So let's just pick a random number, and this is going to be our seed. Now if I go to the path generator and replace the default randomizer with the new .NET randomizer that we just created, and play the game, I will get the same result every time I run the game. And this does not only apply to the level path. If I go to the defined level and go to edit sequence and choose to edit this sequence and make it random, I also have to assign a randomizer here. So if I select the .NET randomizer and select for example 6 as a spawn count, if I keep pressing play I will get the segments in the exact same order. And if I change the value I will get a different order. But this order is going to be the same every time we use the same seed. If we want to get a performance boost, we can take advantage of the new object pooling system that Forever offers. Currently the level we have defines the sequences and the segments within itself, meaning that all the information is contained inside this level object. But we can also choose to use a remote sequence. Remote sequences are basically separate scenes in Unity, which contain the level definition. The benefits of this is that you don't need to have all the assets loaded in the memory. Loading each level will load all its level assets into the memory, and they will get unloaded as the last segment of the level gets destroyed. Now I have the option to pick a scene, but right now I don't have another scene. So let's go and create another scene. I'm going to save this one and save it as generator and create a new scene, which I'm going to save as level. The naming really doesn't matter. What matters is that you add the scene into the build settings here. Now inside the scene, we have the usual camera and directional light. So I'm going to create a new empty object call it level, center it, and add the remote level component. Again, we have the same well-known interface. So I'm gonna click edit sequence, add some sequences, add the level segments. And in this case, I'm gonna set the first sequence to random once again, make it spawn two segments. I'm gonna use the default randomizer. I'm gonna leave this to ordered. And the last sequence I'm going to also set to random and make it spawn 10 segments and pick the same randomizer. Now to use the object pooling, 
all we need to do is check that checkbox here. Now depending on your level segment complexity and count, it might take a while, but once it's done, you will see that a lot of segments have been generated under the level object. These are instances of the level segments used in the sequence and will be loaded with the scene. During generation, instead of having forever generate the segment by using instantiate, it is going to use one of these segments and is going to activate them. Now we need to remove the main camera and the directional light because we don't need additional objects in the scene. And we can save this one. And going back to our level object, we can now set the scene to the level scene here. Now what is going to happen when I press play is that the level scene is going to get loaded into the scene and we can see how part of the segments have already been activated and moved to the level generator object. And if we add a player, which I'm going to do by creating a cube and assigning the projected player component to it, we can move this player around and have forever generate more segments and then we can watch what happens. So more segments get created and the old ones get returned to the level scene. For those of you who are using custom paths in their level segments, we got a surprise for you. We replaced the clunky path editor we had so far with the dream text splines editor, which means that if I add a path and hit edit, I get the dream text splines interface and I can do whatever I want. I have a choice between four types of splines. In this case, I'm going to use the Catman ROM and now I can create points effortlessly across the terrain. If I hit the confine to bounds checkbox, my spline is going to be automatically contained within the bounds of the segment. So yeah, we now have a convenient and user-friendly editor. And this also applies to the custom path generator. Here we go. Just keep in mind that this doesn't mean that Dream Text Plans is now a part of forever. It's only the editor part, but most features are there. Finally, I'd like to go over how you can upgrade your projects to the new version of forever. For this purpose, I'm dropping an old package of forever's examples, which was made to work with the previous versions. So let's go to the examples folder and make the collider on demo work with the newest version. So as soon as I select the level generator, I will get this message. Legacy levels found, convert them to the new scriptable object format. And these are the legacy levels. You can no longer edit them or do anything with them. Instead, we have these buttons next to them. And if I click them, it's going to let me pick where I want to create the new level objects. So I'm going to go to Dream Tech, Forever, Examples, Collider Run, create a new folder here which is going to be called levels. Select this folder. And as soon as I did that, you can see that now we moved the level one object into the level collection here, and it disappeared from the legacy levels. So let's do that for the rest of the levels. And we're done with the levels. If I select one of the levels, I can go click edit sequence. And you see that this is the same level that we had before. Now, of course, because of new randomizers, we're going to get errors for each random sequence. So we know what to do. Settings, pick a randomizer, and we'll do this for each level. And finally, we need to go to the collider path, if the path is a random path generator, and assign the last randomizer here. So that should be it. If I play, I should be able to get the game running. Here we go. These are the most important aspects of 1.10 you need to know about. From here on, there will be more regular updates, because we want to make this tool as good as possible. As I said, we've been using it actively for the development of our game, LifeSlide, and our current goal is on performance and stability. We're going to keep improving Forever's architecture for the next updates, keep making things more streamlined, making it easier to extend functionality, and making everything else more user-friendly. Thank you for watching.